the same we've been talking about talking to a nutritionist the nutritionist doesn't have a sense of organic chemistry they know nutrition they know only, only that they may have a bit of a of a lean into uh, biochemistry but they're certainly nor their their knowledge of organic chemistry is not is not much we call functional so this is a, a you know a different aspect of things so I said I was working on my drinks and and I did want to get a little bit more of an acidic environment into my in, into my drinks, uh, but I realized that I know that that, that uh, tea is has a lot of antioxidants in it. They have a lot of uh, compo chemical components that sort of uh, help deal with a lot of issues within the body. And I already knew from experimentation that increasing your fluids on a two to one basis to your solid actually changes the dynamic of your skin. I realized that in many cases, dry skin. Even eczema and chapped lips, these are all sort of issues of, of dry skin, uh, has to do with, with is a hydration issue. For some reason, the body, particularly in eczema, uh, doesn't retain the amount of water it needs to retain uh, in order to keep the skin in a proper condition, the, 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 softened, the softened condition. So this is what produces the eczema. The eczema is basically a drying and cracking of the skin on a very small level. Sometimes you can see it larger, but uh, more often than not, it's on a very fine level and you just see the redness. Uh, this is actually what happens when you have rosy cheeks and uh, it's cold outside. What's happening is that your skin is drying along the exposed, uh, uh, along the exposed parts. And one of the solutions to this is hydration. And this is as simple as having a glass of water. But the thing is, it depends on the 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 issue here is how much water do you need? Because if you take too much water, simply start dumping water down your your throat and into your body, the danger is, and this is before after you've exercised, the worst thing to do to your body is to have a glass of water. Why? And this is if you're, if you're exercising heavily, you're doing a lot of weightlifting, you're doing a lot of you know uh, heavy exercise, you know you're doing a good routine, then what you want is something like a pop. Because the pop puts electrolytes and other other uh, sort of they're basically sugar-based uh, uh, nutrients back into your body again that have been leached out by the exercising. If you have a glass of water, you're going to further deplete your body of your body of essential nutrients. So water is not a good thing after exercise. What you typically want is you want something like like a juice or, or a pop or even a glass of milk, uh, something that has nutrients within it that in the fluid environment the body can uptake very quickly, can take in very quickly. And I'm talking about uptake, because taking in is not you know it's not a matter of getting into your body into your stomach. It's a matter of the 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 body, the the physiology to take up the nutrients into the body into the tissues. Not specifically the physical locale of the body itself, and so my solution was is that uh, I do have the milk. I've increased my milk load, and instead of going to pop, because pop was expensive, I went to uh, uh, Chinese tea. Chinese. I'm in a Chinese neighborhood, in an Asian neighborhood. Uh, I'll talk more about the Chinese and Asian stuff a little bit later on, but uh, that's a sort of a sidetrack as a tangent, and. For with three teaspoons of three teaspoons uh, with a, a, a three to four teaspoons of uh, tea into a tea ball, I can make just about nine liters of uh, iced tea. Right, you brew the brew the tea, 
uh, and you've got just about nine liters. And so what, what I did is I bought a carafe that produces nine liters. It gives me a whole lunch, large bunch of iced tea all at once, and it's specifically for iced tea. And it cost me about $120. But if you consider that pop right now is about uh, $12, $13 a case, let's round it off to about uh, $10 a case. Uh, in 10 weeks, right, 10 times 10 is 100, I've paid off the correct. Ten, in 10 weeks is just about uh, two and a half months, because four weeks is a month, so two, four, two months is uh, eight weeks, four times two, plus another two weeks, so two and a half months. Two and a half months, the carafe has paid for itself, because now you've gone from, from spending uh, $10 a week to now, because three teaspoons in a, in a tin of, uh, of, uh, of, 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 uh, of tea, loose leaf tea, and they, usually you can get them for about five dollars. Uh, if you can do three teaspoons from there, and this thing, this lasts a long time. Uh, it lasts me about six months. The tin lasts about six months, but I buy it in a larger bulk actually, so I can get them in bulk bags. So it's actually cheaper than that. So I'm paying pennies uh, for the nine liters. As compared to, uh, and that lasts me about a week. The nine liters lasts me about a week. As compared to spending uh, uh, ten dollars a week. So in other words, the savings goes into purchasing the craft. After after uh, two and a half months, after three three months, you're now saving money because you're not spending the money you would have spent if you were buying pop or other types of juices. So. Uh, it gives you a little bit of room on your budget as well. Anyways, I'm going to leave this here for now. I have to go to, uh, uh, have something to eat. So <laughs> I know this has been a long talk. So uh, I will see you in the next segment. And uh, yeah. Well, hello, everybody. Uh, welcome back to the. Next segment of the uh, Big Bang Theory Hours BTS log. Yeah, we're chugging along. Uh, uh, work is definitely getting done. Uh, but, you know, as things go, it's, there's always uh, twists and turns. Uh, I put together a good, uh, uh, the third episode for uh, Tweetline Plus. I put something good together. If, as This is a, we're still in the introductory part. Introductory part uh, and haven't fully gotten off the... Uh, starting post yet, but this will be our first uh, major uh, uh, note-taking session. And it, it took, the notes took a little longer than I expected to take because, uh, and this is what I'm going to point out, is that, that some of the information is, is is difficult, you know, people people will post information and say, oh, this is this is a definite fact. But when you go do the background search, that fact is not actually fact, it's hearsay. It's, it's something they heard from someplace else. And it's very difficult to source what they say is fact. And sometimes it'll take, it took me, it's taken me two days to sort of mean out what was assumed to be fact. <laughs> you know, all these articles were carrying this as fact, but no one actually went and checked it to see that you can't find any information on this. They say, oh, oh, oh a... Researchers and scientists did blah, 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 right? X, Y, Z. You go back to find the research, and typically, you know, if the research is there, it's out there in the public. Uh, like one of the, one of the researchers that, 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 that was sort of separate from this whole thing, you know, he did a splurb on I want to find out who he is and say, well, well, what's his quali qualifications? You know, this is, isn't saying what his degrees are, but what has he done in this field to sort of say, okay, yeah, this is, uh, you know, his work, his 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 ideas are credible, uh, and, and this is sort of the backup beyond the actual science itself. Uh, and he's sort of questioned the whole concept that the plague, uh, and he's talking about the Black Death here. That the plague uh, was simply a flea-borne disease. He says the plague that wiped out a lot of uh, Europe. Uh, was actually it was not only the carried by the fleas, but it was also uh, part and parcel to pneumonia. In other words, it was a pneumonic disease. It was it was a, something like starts off as an influenza and then goes even goes further and becomes a pneumonia. So uh, the question is, in a lot of his 
his statements actually mean out what happened. That, that there's no way that the the uh, the, the bubonic plague, as a, and, because there's two different types of plague. The bubonic is when you're bitten by a flea or, or something like that. That's sort of it's, it's an injection into the bloodstream, and the other is airborne. It goes into the lungs, it goes into the pulmonary system, and because it's with the air, that's pneumonic. It's called, so it's called a, a pneumonic plague, right? So there's a bubonic and there's pneumonic. Uh, and the argument is, is that it was not simply a bubonic plague, but both a bubonic and a pneumonic plague. plague, plague. And, but they think they haven't sort of, again, uh, this guy p puts out his theories, and he's a credible person. He's actually a virolo virologist. And you look at his work, he's got a huge record, uh, you know, actual research and, and again his, his research is all online you can see, you can find everything he's done online these so-called scientists and researchers the they called forensic scientists and researchers the, the, the that that supposedly came out with this the sort of uh, un, the unearthed skeletons it, 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 uh, in uh, London an area called crossrail oh examining the skeletons from the time period. Well, the problem is when you <laughs> when you when when you dig and and rebuild in a city like London or the Paris or uh, uh, Rome that have these huge histories, every place you dig, you're gonna find a graveyard, and this is what happened. They dig, they dug, they found a graveyard. They typed the dig, they they timed the graveyard back to the, the plague, and said, "Oh, let's do a forensic study to see, to see what happened," because now they actually have bodies. That were that were, that were just being unearthed. Uh, the CRC to go back and say, okay, let's see what happened back there. But the, the, who the researchers were were never named. I can't find uh, a, 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 when I talk, look, do the look for cross rail research, the research project that was there that was the, for the archaeological project. Nothing shows up. Uh, nothing shows up in the medical records. Nothing shows up in uh, the medical databases. Nothing shows up in the virology databases about the plague in terms of this this dig here. So they remain a group of researchers and scientists. In other words, they're anonymous and unknown. Yet in any other disease, when I go, actually go into disease, uh, you can actually start typing diseases because you have the researchers out and open. If you're a researcher, you go on, you say, "Okay, I'm a researcher," and they let you into this. Uh, area on the internet there. It's all done on the internet. That says, okay, that gives you the raw data. And you have to sift through all that raw data and say, okay, see, and see what it means and see what it doesn't mean. And your initial perusal is that that, that the information for all this stuff is there and all, uh, then for unex, unexplained reasons, this research that has been touted from, from the Guardian for major newspapers has sort of been repeated all over the place on, on the major news media doesn't show up anywhere in the research articles. Nothing shows up. And so this is sort of what I'll be bringing out uh, in the uh, uh, the news episode today, Tweetline Plus, is that uh, headlines need to be really sort of taken with a grain of salt because you don't know whether or not something being said is, is true or not. I mean, everyone, no one sort of questioned the, the, <coughs> the validity of the article. Even National Geographic had a splurb on it, but they didn't tell you specifically who was involved in the research. So the thing is that, that this has to be uh, this has to be uh, 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 dug through further, and it presents a sort of a sidetrack. And this one I'll talk about as well in the news broadcast. Talk about tangents. How when you start on one particular area of research, uh, something pops up that's interesting in another area that you have to go look at because. It's pertinent to the story that you're working on. Pertinent to what, what the thing, the research you are working on. It, it presents. It, it's, it's not nothing. It's not absolutely necessary, but it, it is a necessity to go and, and sort of fact check these things. And again, I, I don't really like the term fact check because you're not checking facts. It's more of an observation to see what information is there and what information is not there that will lend to the sort of the credibility of the story. Again, it's, it's talking about. It's filling in those pieces of, of the puzzle. To get yourself a better view of what's actually happening, uh, without those pieces, uh, the picture is a little more fuzzy. Uh, there is not as clear, and you're stating things without 
having uh, an extra degree of certainty. Not even, and again, not that you're going to get an absolute, but you get that extra degree of certainty that uh, sort of denotes uh, high quality research. Uh, but the thing is, that, again, this is this this is something that uh, takes a while. This was two days worth of research. It was literally forty-eight hours. In research beyond seven hours, really knocks me out. Uh, you walk up, you get up, and you're, you're staggering. You can't stand properly, uh, and it looks like you're you're pun it looks like you're drunk. It looks like you're intoxicated. I mean, when people say to me, "Man, I watch your videos. What are you on?" I said, "Well, research. This is studying. This this is seven to twelve hours of study. This this is it. This is this is what it looks like." And <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. You know, behind the scenes is this, this. This is what I was saying is for for myself to leave my track record out there, right, for qualification of what I'm saying, this stuff has to be out here. It has, you know, the amount of research that I do and how it affects me in terms of the physiology and so on and so forth has to be out there. It has to be understood. This is, the, the, when you're sourcing my work, there it is. There, all the information is there. And this is the way I say, even with going to the medical, into the medical research, all the information is there. You go into, you know, like, you want to study the history of bubonic plague, you want to study from the from the researcher's perspective, the, the the CDC, the Center for Center for Di the Center for Disease Control, uh, they have a huge database on who was sick, when, and why. You don't know. The thing is, who is not necessarily. You don't need a uh, specific name. You just need a you need a uh, a gender, and you need a race or or, or an ethnicity, because different uh, viruses affect different. Ethnicities differently. There's a difference between, let's say, uh, a, a Middle Eastern person and how they get sick, and a white person who, and, and a European, and how they get sick. There's a difference there. And so that these things should be noted in the medical record and re research record because you, you're not looking at it from a race point of view that, that someone is inferior or or or, or sup superior. Uh, you're looking at it from a perspective that. This information is necessary to determine the differences in how people get sick. In other words, when you're working out the epidemiology, when you're looking into how a person gets sick, and the history of, of the illness, these sort of called demographics are necessary because they're part of how you understand the spread and the mechanism of the, that particular disease. Wipe that information out, and you're missing, again, you're missing a chunk of information that clarifies uh, what's happening. So, <laughs> guess what I forgot to do? Time and date stamp. Uh, it's 7 hours and 38 minutes into the day of uh, Friday, April uh, 15th, because April 14th was yesterday. That was Thursday. Uh, <laughs> 2016. Uh, yeah. <laughs> My new diet is working. I seem to be more uh, cognitively aware. So I am able to sort of figure out these things, like, you know, uh, what day it is, uh, just by sort of remembering the day before or, you know, something like that. Uh, so it, it, the, the, the new diet's working. Uh, I just got to give it a, another month or so. Uh, and, and this is nothing to do that. This is the adjustment to the diet. This, uh, and, and you'll, you'll, if you go back into the previous uh, vlogs, you'll sort of see me start talking about the diet. And I will continue to talk about the diet and, now, and its adjustments. And sort of as we move along. So, anyways, I'll see you in the next segment of uh, Big Bang Theory RL's uh, BTS vlog. All right, take it easy. Uh, let's begin right off with the time and date stamp. It is 11 hours and 15 minutes into the day of, uh, uh, yeah, Friday, April 15th, 2016. All right, so. Got to get dressed, got to go out and do some food shopping. Uh, should be a lot lighter load today. Uh, this is the whole thing I've been working up to reducing the load. Let's get the pan right. Here we go. That should be it today. It's, I don't, I don't, shouldn't be bringing back as much as I uh, usually do so. Shouldn't be as bad. I have 
one episode going up now. We're keeping on schedule with our uploads to uh, uh, for uh, Big Bang Theory RL for the BTS vlogs. Anyways, uh, that's going all right. Uh, I should when I come back, I should film uh, the next episode for uh, INN's uh, headlines. Not headlines. INN's tweet line. Tweet line plus. <laughs> I get these mixed up. <laughs> that's uh. That happens frequently when there's a lot, when there's a lot going on. My body is. Uh, I think I was talking about the team. My body's fatigued. My body's somewhat fatigued, but uh, not as bad as it had been before. So. And uh, now it's time to use the. Uh, ice packs that I bought. The ice packs give me uh, a longer time out. In fact I'm just gonna use the two I'm just gonna use the two the two ice packs today. Usually it's just one but I found that one wasn't enough so I'm gonna be using two And we'll see what stage they, you know, what type of, what type of state they're in uh, when we come back. Whether they're completely melted, not melted, you know. The last time when I can't got back, they weren't melted. The, the, the one pack wasn't melted, and uh, I had been not, oh, I had actually got stopped off uh, at a department store. I do have to stop off at another store. I need to get a mop, so. Uh, We'll kind of see, we'll have to sort of see how that ends up working out. Okay. Get this on my back. Then when I get back, we'll see, end up seeing how things are. Okay, see you then. Well, I am back. Time to unpack. I actually time to get the backpack off first and then I will unpack. I ended up getting two mops. They were a good price, so I got two. The older mops I had. This one working was supposed time to replace them. So ugh. they were at a good price. Nope. Uh, so I got two. Oh, let me go check the time. Give me time and dates now. Oh. It is uh, 12 hours and 52 minutes into the day of Friday, April 15th, uh, 2016. Almost was going to say 2014. That was in my mind, but I realized that was wrong. So, uh, it was a very nice day, very sunny. I did dress lighter, but once again, the issue with this time of year is when you leave... You're cold. When you come back, it's sweltering hot. Yeah, it's sweltering hot. We're sweltering heat. But you are sweltering hot. <laughs> uh, to the point where you're... Uh, uh, sweating buckets. And that's what I'm doing right now. Ooh. Oh, it is hard to stay in a proper attire, a proper look, or a groomed look when you walk in like this. And although this is mundane food shopping, the weight, the load that I'm carrying certainly makes it 
if you will, extreme food shopping. <laughs> the ironic thing is, so someone today uh, driving by thought I was man tracker. <laughs> so I just gave him a thumbs up and I got all good. Yes, I made him happy. It's man tracker! Ah, uh, this certain little old me. <laughs> There's no point when I go down that way, when I go over there to, to the sort of the kitchen to yell all the way here. Because it's still hard to hear me anyway, so. Uh, there's no point to it. So, I go there just for a bit to, uh, didn't fall, I didn't move the camera, so. Uh, I go over there just for a bit, just to put the stuff away there, uh, and then come right back. So that's the uh, logic there is there's no point in sort of bringing it with me. Take the jacket off all the way. Well, it's going to be a bit of an issue uh, since uh, I'm wet. Uh, this is kind of some, some, some. This is how you can catch a cold. Is if you walk around uh, in short sleeves like this and you're wet, that could. Uh, be a uh, good invitation for uh, an infection like pneumonia to sort of set in. No, uh, infection, pneumonia is, not, is an infection, but it's not uh, the primary infection. The primary infection is influenza. It progresses down the throat to a sore throat, into the bronchial tubes, that's bronchitis, and then finally uh, it ends up in the lungs. As pneumonia. This is what made the bag heavy. Uh, ten pounds of potato. T uh, yeah, ten, uh, no, twenty pounds. Yeah, ten pounds of potatoes, right? right? Four kilograms, ten pounds of potatoes. This made the bag heavy. This is how I do French fries. So, I have real French fries, not uh, the stuff packaged uh, from the frozen food section. Everything's the most more or less put away. I think that's be it for here now. Uh, I have one more item to put away. That's the milk. Oh, that's what I had to do. I was going to check the, uh, the cooler bag. Remember, we put in the uh, two, uh, the two uh, ice packs. Not as cold as they were when they went in, but still frozen. So... That's good. I know that the perishables that I get, uh, like milk, uh, when I uh, unpack it, uh, and today was, was a rather warmer day, uh, they'll be all right. So, 
Anyways, I will see you in the next segment of the BTS, uh, Big Bang Theory Real's BTS vlog. Is going fast because tired. <laughs> Me so tired. Anyways, <laughs> next uh, uh, segment. I'll see you in the next segment. Democratic Earth. Earth.